Okay, this video is going to cover some detailed principles of ERP recording. It was made possible by materials from Pursue, preparing undergraduates for research using electrophysiology. Check them out, pursueerp.com. So after watching this video, you should be able to identify sources of noise, select an appropriate reference, select appropriate configuration of electrodes, explain what impedance is and how to reduce it, and select an appropriate sample rate. So the bottom line here in this uh, for recording ERPs is to get clean data, right? And this is a general principle, garbage in, garbage out. So if you're collecting noisy garbage data, then analyzing that isn't gonna yield anything that's uh, valuable. So we want clean data, no matter what kind of data we're, we're collecting, we want clean, accurate data. So for EEG, what does that mean? Well, here's an image here. So on the left, you see pretty clean EEG data. And on the right, you see fuzzier, like it's got more noise in this data, a lot more eye blanks. So that would be an example of some noisy data. So what are the benefits of clean data? Well, we're always trying to um, record the signal from amongst the noise. So we, if we have cleaner data, we don't need as many trials. So we could have a shorter experiment. Maybe we could have more experimental conditions. In general, you could have fewer subjects to find statistically significant effects. So it's, this is going to increase our statistical power. And uh, the less noise there is, the more reliable it will be, right? The better replication uh, we could have. So reducing noise to collect clean data, the couple ways you could approach this before you actually collect the data. This is where it's ideal. And we can, for EEG purposes, one of the best things that we could do is lower impedance, have a really good prep to record activity. And here we're just going to minimize electrical artifacts, either coming from the person's body or from the environment itself. After it's recorded, there's some things that we can do. We can average. So this is one of the things we do with ERPs, right? We average across trials. More trials is going to be better for canceling out the noise. Uh, and then filtering the data, uh, we can also use, select appropriate filters to help us electronically sort of eliminate some of the noise. But there's costs for that, right? So you got to be careful about not over filtering because that can add distortion. So just a quick reviewer of the electrodes. We've covered this before in other videos and modules, but remember we're recording the voltage here. It's the difference between two electrodes, really your active electrode and your reference electrode. Of course, the ground is part of that too, to eliminate noise from the system. Historically, lots of different reference sites have been used. There's no good solution to this particular problem because there's no voltage free or neutral position on the body. So in memory research, you'll see uh, prototypically people using the average of the left and right mastoids. That is, you'll record to one of the electrodes online and then treat the other one as an active electrode and then digitally average to the left and right mastoids offline. But you'll also see people use the common average and nose tip as well. Generally, that doesn't change the components much. It might change their morphology a little bit, but uh, it doesn't really like eliminate them or the effects are, are generally robust to the, the kind of reference. So we use uh, left and right mastoids. Several factors to consider here if you're selecting one in a, in a general sense. Now for the ERP lab, like I said, we're going to use the standard that's in our area and that is the uh, mastoids. Uh, but you should understand that the reference can affect the waveform. So if you're reading articles or consuming other research, it's something to consider. Uh, how does the reference influence it? And sometimes you'll see researchers even re-reference the data using a different reference and presenting it a couple different ways. Electrodes and impedance. So the electrodes uh, that we use are silver, silver chloride. So they have their silver with a little chloride coating. This helps record um, low frequency waveforms uh, a little bit better, a little bit more stable. But a lot of times people use 10 gold electrodes. And uh, you could consider where you're going to place the electrodes, depending on what study you're doing. So sometimes people use a different, what's called a montage or 
positioning of the electrodes across the scalp. So for example, if you're going to do visual research, you might put a high cluster of electrodes towards the back of the scalp because that's what you're most interested in. Now, because we're doing memory research, we use a very general placement across the scalp. This is our electrodes that we use uh, in the ERP lab. So our ground electrode is the AFZ, as you can see up here. And then uh, we treat our left mastoid as our reference electrode online. And we're gonna use the right mastoid as an active electrode during our recording. And then we digitally re-reference to the average of the left and right uh, during our processing routines. All the green circles are electrodes that we record from. Now the naming convention here, this is uh, what's called the 1020 system. So the Z indicates that the electrode is on the midline. So uh, instead of using a zero, which could be confused with occipital lobe, uh, it's a Z that indicates that the electrode is on the midline. F refers to frontal, C refers to the vertex over sort of the central sulcus, P over the parietal lobe, O over the occipital, lobe, T over the temporal lobes, both on the left and right side. And of course, we have rows that are kind of in the center. So the FC3, for example, is just sort of frontal central uh, in its positioning. So the numbers here represent how far the electrode is from the midline. So one would be 10%, three would be 30%, seven would be 70%, etc. Odd numbers on the left hemisphere, even numbers on the right hemisphere, but the distances are the same. So how do we get a clean signal? Well, this is a factor of impedance. So impedance, we're gonna measure in the laboratory with an impedance meter. And the key idea here is to understand that this is impedance is anything that sort of prevents electrical currents from flowing. And we're gonna measure that in ohms. So in our human EEG, impedance comes from the skin itself. So the skin has a layer of oil and dead skin cells and it creates about a million ohms or one mega ohm of impedance. Skin itself can be a source of electrical noise. Again, the, the factors that contribute to this are the oil and dead skin cells on this. So we spend a little time lowering impedance, electrode impedance, to decrease the recording of skin potentials. So why would we lower the electrode impedance? It, why do we go from a million ohms down to some lower number? Well, it's really about noise and your amplifier. So there's one issue here. There are what are called high input impedance systems. So this is the input impedance on the amplifier itself. So approximately roughly greater than 100 or 200 mega ohms. And if you have greater input impedance, you can effectively measure EEG with higher inter electrode impedances, like right around 50 kilo ohms or so. Lower input impedance systems need lower inter-electrode impedance to get clear signals. Typically, below five kilo ohms or so is a common threshold uh, that people use. However, lowering impedance generally improves signal quality even for high input impedance systems, and I direct you to this article here that appeared in Psychophysiology. So how do you reduce the electrode repeats? Remember, what we're gonna do is remove the oil and dead skin cells down to less than five kilo ohms. So one thing you can do is rub or clean the skin with alcohol. And so we do this for our ocular electrode sites and the uh, reference electrode sites uh, because it's just faster and easier to go ahead and clean the skin. You can remove makeup, oil and dead skin cells from the skin to clean it and that will help lower the uh, electrode impedance. Then what we're gonna do is individually abrade the skin. So we take a sterile cotton swab, we stick it through the hole and we gently rub on the person's skin to lower impedance. Uh, so you'll learn how to do that in the lab. So amplifying the signal, so the, the raw analog EEG signal first has to be converted into a digital signal. So what we're recording is changes in electrical fluctuation over time. So it's a continuous signal but we can't record a continuous signal. We have to take individual samples. And then the amplifier, so the amplifier is gonna sample the signal and amplify it or increase it. This is called gain. We talked about this in a previous video. The issue of digitizing, you can see in this particular slide here, if we have a signal that is oscillating, if we're taking individual poles uh, at various sample points, if our sampling is too low, we might miss 
some changes in the signal fluctuation. So we have to be cognizant of our sampling rate. And in general, our sampling rate should be at least twice the highest frequency of the components that we're interested in measuring. Um, so why do we need the rate to be at least two times the highest frequency? This is something called the Nyquist theorem. And essentially, we want to prevent aliasing. So if you look here at the left hand figure, you can see here we have a waveform with an alternating frequency, right? But our sampling is too slow to actually capture that. And in fact, it looks like a much slower alternation of a signal. Hence, we're recording a different frequency wave or an alias. If we had an adequate sampling rate, you see that we would visualize or understand what the actual frequency was. So we want to make sure that our sampling rate is somewhere above 150 hertz. So we sample at a much higher rate uh, in the ARP lab, and then we down sample to 256 hertz, so we're well above this uh, frequency issue. So just to summarize some of the things that you learned in this video, we're going to reduce noise before data collection or during data collection with impedances to get uh, the cleanest possible signals. This, this means that we have to use a uh, reference electrode, right? And we have to lower electrode impedance at all of the electrodes. And we want to use an adequate sampling rate in order to capture our component of interest.